Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mary. Together, me, my teammates, Lauren, and Samantha were given the task of retrofitting the colonnade and the pavilion. For those of you who are not familiar with these buildings, they are large-scale residential units located in Newark, and they're your typical mid-century modern buildings, which means they have these great large windows, which is terribly inefficient across the board. So our solution was to hang these panels filled with algae off the facade. What this does is it allows for thermal control, but the algae itself is also used to create biomass, which would go back and power the building itself. Over here, you can see an overview of how the system works, where we would use fresh rainwater, which was collected, to go into the panels along with a culture of algae. It runs on a 14-day cycle, and throughout these 14 days, compressed air and nutrients are introduced into the system. Then this algae is collected, the biomass is extracted from it, and this in turn goes back to heat and power the building. Over here, you can see some of our calculations. By having this system and implementing it nine months out of the year, it would yield 1,700 pounds of directly combustible biomass. And the way it works is we would use nanochloropsis, which is a microalgae, meaning it's single-celled and naked to the eye, or invisible to the naked eye. And we would use nutrient-rich saline water as well as compressed air to create the biofuel. And it runs off a 14-day cycle. Here you can see it grow. So on day one, you would see just clear water, and the algae would begin to grow. And you would see that through the hue of green that it is. So the building itself would be constantly changing colors and varying shades of greens. So the residents living in the building itself would be able to see their own energy growing right in front of their eyes. And here we have a detail of how the frame works. It's essentially an aquarium hidden inside an aluminum frame with a layer of argon gas to insulate the system. And here's our proposed design. We would only need to cover about a quarter of the building in algae panels. We would, to, in order to power the building itself, and the rest of the building would be left as uh, simply glazed panels to allow natural light in. Uh, here you can see the panels closer up and how they're changing colors. We would introduce the algae according in various times, so the system is constantly undulating and changing shades of green. And important aspect of this project is daylighting. If you drive by the apartment complex right now, I guarantee almost every single window has their curtains closed because this building lets in entirely too much light. And in the interior cavity, in between the existing facade and our panels, we would have a balcony space. And this balcony acts as a natural lighting shading mechanism, which blocks out a lot of the, which blocks out a lot of the solar energy happening in the warmer months, but allows the low winter sun to enter the building. So it would allow for more, pass, more passive and natural solar heat gain. And here you can see a detail of the building where we would use tube steel to hold up this structure because as you can imagine, it's very heavy. Here you see another detail of the space that's created where it not only goes into powering the building, but it creates a space, a three season room for the user to occupy the balcony space. And here's just another detail of how the system comes together. Here you can begin to understand it a little bit more. Water would be pumped in from the top, and on the bottom we would introduce air, which is partially so that the algae can have the carbon dioxide it needs to grow and nourish, and also which shakes up this system, so it's constantly being redistributed, and from the bottom we'll be able to pull out the algae and collect it for its biomass. And a big part of this project is the panel movement. They rotate about a central axis, so they would be hooked up to photovoltaic sensors, so they would be constantly tracking the sunlight 
and constantly be at an angle that would be most efficient for it to reach the amount of sunlight so they could be growing as fastly as, po as quick as possible. Um, but there are also manual controls that are hooked up to this. And if the space in the interior cavity becomes overheated, they would automatically open up all the way so that this space can then um, ventilate and air out so that the user of the apartment could use it. And in turn, if it also gets too cold, it would open up so that, if it gets too cold, it would close completely so that it would warm up and again, the, a user of the apartment could use it. And what we are hoping to achieve with this project goes beyond a carbon negative building. We often hear about carbon or carbon zero buildings in architecture, which is that your building doesn't use any carbon or any power. But something that's very strong about this project is the fact that even its waste is nutrient rich, nutrient rich water, which can then go back into the environment. So in turn, it would create a completely carbon negative building. Thank you.